Hello, 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 guys, and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today, we're going back to our campaign overview series, and this time we are checking out corn. For those who are new to well, the channel and the series, this series is a focus on, well, every faction in the game and what they do in the campaign, what kind of mechanics and such. We break them down for you so you're ready for each well, each campaign when the game releases on the 17th. And at first, before we get into the video, I do want to say thanks to Creative Assembly for giving me early access to the game so I can get these videos out to you as early as possible. And if you want to support the channel, you can do by purchasing it off my Nexus store, to which I'll link below. Nexus does provide scene keys as well as gives me a percentage cut of all purchases. These type of things do keep the channel floating along, so thank you. Orn, the blood god, rages upon his brass throne resting atop a mountain of skulls, built from the countless heads of the great champions his followers have slain over an immeasurable number of eons. He cares not from where blood flows so long as it does in his name. It is not uncommon to see the warriors of Corn fighting amongst themselves, battling to prove their skills in combat and rise higher in the areas of their wrathful masters. To follow Corn is to embrace violence and destruction, and to pledge utter subservient to his cause. Alrighty, so let's have a look at well the Exiles of Corn's faction effects and climates and all that. So the faction effects that the uh, Exiles of Corn have is Raffle Reaper. Raffle Reaper gives you replenishment, army re replenishment in foreign territories, as well as reducing your diplomatic relations with other Cornate factions. Of course, the uh, law of of Corn they don't really get along with each other; they're too busy fighting each other. And lastly, you get more movement range after you raising a settlement, which does lean into the mechanics of the Exiles of Corn, though we will talk about that a little later on in the video. Other, other stuff like the climates, is, uh, they're suitable for frozen, mountainous, wasteland, and chaotic wasteland. Unpleasant climates are temperate, temperate island, savannah, Desert and jungle, an uninhabitable one, our magical forest and ocean. So let's get on to talk about Scarbrand the Exile, the legendary lord for the Corn faction. So, Scarbrand the Exile is, well, <laughs> no surprise there, is the Exile one. The Exile one gives you the campaign effects, campaign movement range. Plus 35 after winning a battle. This is very much similar to what I believe Torox the Brass Bull got in Warhammer 2, uh, if I remember correctly. As well as that, he gets minus 35% recruitment costs when in enemy or raised territory. So basically, you know, when you're out and about exploring the world, showing everyone your skulls, you can, you know, get cheaper recruitment. Very nice if you want a really aggressive um constant attacking faction now on to the skills of scarbrand the exiled as you might expect uh, scarbrand and corn have a very thematic skill tree that you will start to see in this uh you could probably see this on screen already maim kill destroy slaughter bellow of endless fury murder hunt cleave crush fueled by rage very thematic, as you might expect. Now, all of these abilities provide you weapon strength bonuses. All of them. Every single one of them. As, But they all provide different second bonuses, like, for example, main is melee attack, kill is melee defense, uh, crush is uh, charge bonus, murder, health, you know. So, say, just constant buff to your weapon strength, as well as a, a extra bonus. Bellow of Fu Endless Fury is like a breath attack that he has, um, I mean, or quote unquote a magic missile with a multi uh, with uh, free uses. Uh, he can't be in combat though; he has to be um, out of combat to use this. And then, lastly, fueled by rage is a passive ability that increases weapon damage and uh, armor piercing damage. So he's all about the murder, murder, murder. I mean, he is Scarbrand the Exiled. He is a corn. <laughs> Um, a corn, uh, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> English gone. You guys tell me in the comment section what he is. My my memory's gone when recording this. <laughs> uh, but he does have his own skill tree, his own unit uh, skill line. He's got Rage Incarnate, which is a Hexora, which is all about that rampancy or rampage. Uh, you got Relentless uh, Fury or Restless Fury, rather. 
um, which is a increase your campaign effects. Your uh, so instead of thirty five percent, you get forty five percent campaign movement uh, range after winning a battle or surprise Vanguard deployment. So you know, really leaning into that aggression, really leaning into that attack. You know, you constantly want that blood for the blood guard, right? And scored for the school throne. Then he's got Raffle Reaper, which is your ability, which is another ability he gets, uh, which is 50% weapon damage and armor piercing weapon damage. So even more damage. Just if you want, if you want more damage and you don't feel like you got enough on Scarbrand, well, you can get more with Raffle Reaper. After that, he gets Drinker of Blood, which is, gives him the ability Gore Feast. What Gore Feast is? It's a well, it's a regeneration ability or passive ability, which heals him as he's in melee. So he's just you know. When he, as he's getting that blood and skulls, he's just healing because I guess he's eating everything. <laughs> and then he gets more in, um, income from post battle loot. After that, he gets Anarchy of Madness. So, what Anarchy of Madness is, it lowers the control of the enemy provinces that you're in, also increasing the corruption in the area. Finally, he's got Locus of Endless War. So what this does is gives you plus three units on creation of a blood host for all characters faction wide. So not even just for Scarbrand. Now, what uh, blood hosts are are essentially you you summon them as uh, by using the bloods for the blood guard option when raising the enemy. So we'll get to that in a little bit later on the video. And of course, law wise, Slanesh hates corn. Corn hates Slanesh. So there's a little bit of flavour there by hate slash skill which gives you bonuses against slash factions so let's go talk about the faction mechanics for scarbrand the exiled and corn so corn gets the unique faction mechanic schools so what schools are is essentially every time you you know kill people in in combat you gain schools uh, you and you can collect them after the battle it's a choice um you basically then uh, could use it to, you know, occupy settlements or do the action, which we'll show in a little bit, and technologies, which we'll, we'll check out the technologies now. So the corn factions technologies is uh, categorized into eight different segments, all for the blood gods. You start off with the pillar of rage unlocked at the start. There are eight technologies per per category. Uh, and you, as we said, you have to spend scores for each technology, slowly getting more expensive as you go through the game. So from at the start, you get they cost three hundred. At the end, it's a thousand. So, what is in these technologies? So let's take a look. So the Pillar of Rage gives you some bonuses for more movement range when raising a settlement. You know, resistance. There's some good, cool, there's some cool stuff in here. You get some upkeep uh, for warriors and more scores. So you can take a look here uh, for what kind of stuff you want. But the more expensive ones provide you, you know, the, the, the better buffs. For example, armor for blood letters of corn and exiled blood letters, blood letters of corn. Um, ambush defense chance. Just you don't want to get ambushed by Zinch, do you? Uh, leadership aura size. Vigor loss. Hero capacity for blood reapers and rank. More bonuses for laws and heroes. Wound recovery time for all characters, which is very good. And recruitment durations for school crushers of corn units. Um, so yeah, there's some good stuff in here. Definitely take a look for if you want any specifics. Uh, but you have to note that you have to research three of them before you go on to the next ones, as noted by here. So three technologies per category to unlock the next. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Another unique mechanic that Scarbrand has is the blood uh, letting mechanic. Essentially, this is a um, tier-based system where for each battle you win, or not for each rather, for the specific amount of battles you win, the higher rewards you get. For example, uh, if you're at uh, 0 to 2, you get the lowest rewards, which is minus 5 uh, upkeep. Plus 25 growth, plus one casualty replenishment rate, and no corn corruption, and a duration uh, to your recruitment 
pull by one with to the minimum one the max of course is a lot better there you get a minus two global corruption uh cl not global corruption rather global recruitment duration plus six year corruption spread on the local parliaments uh minus 20 upkeep plus 70 growth in all provinces and all armies get a replenishment rate now it is to note that this is um exclusive like to the lord but for each laws has a different thing uh but we can check out if we go to attack the chaos warriors here Wars of that you can then see that the bar is slowly rises so i spoke a little bit earlier about schools and that you can use them to interact with settlements so if we go to attack the brass glacier we have two different options one is the schools for the school from which it would raise the settlement and harvest the schools of the faction uh, or rather the fallen and blood for the blood gods which provides you unit replenishment and blooded for one turn blooded provides you a uh or rather it summons a blood host this army cannot recruit or exchange units with any other army and will take damage over time but survival can be extended by fighting battles plus births up your winds of magic so let's go do the blood for the blood gods Here we have the Slaughter of Masters, or Slaughter Masters, rather, which is your, your your army that spawned from raising the settlement for the Blood God. So if we take a look, we got some excited blood letters, some blood letters of corn, some blood crushers, and spawn of corn, and blood shrines. So this is actually quite a potent army. Um, so yeah. Of course, as we said, like the more battles they fight, the longer it lasts. They do take damage over time. You'll see that. Um, you know, it, it, you'll see that as as long as you you know don't do anything with it. One thing to note with blood host armies is you can get additional forces for them if you do click this burn. What this is is the skull throne. So this does cost two thousand schools, but when you do activate it, it does last for ten seconds. It, 10 seconds no 10 turns good lord 10 seconds would be over very fast but anyway uh it will <laughs> it will increase your movement range uh, after raising a settlement uh, by 25 percent income from post battles by 25 and also unlocks the army ability summoned from below uh, beyond which spawns a unit of blood letters that degrade over time as well as that it does give you two more units on the creation of blood hosts uh, so you want to do this uh, when you, you know, right before you're about, about, to, uh, about to siege something. Um, but yeah, as, as I said, coin is really all about that, you know, attacking, raising settlements and kind of getting the movement after and going off on a rampage. Unlike, uh, similar to like uh, Tarox. So we click this now. And I've called upon the blood god and he has heard you cry that the bloodshed commands. But of course... We've already got our army, so it won't come into effect here until we do a no bring a another one. So what thing? What else you can do is, if you want to colonize a settlement after raising, for example, you do have to spend a quite hefty amount of skills to do so, and of course your demonic favor. So if you click colonize, we can take the area, of course, but we are we are going to lower our our settlement. Oh, sorry, our schools for it. You may remember this from the previous Slanesh video, Unholy Manifestations. This works similar to Slanesh. You have to gain your corruption to unlock the rest. You get four options, and as they you gain corruption spread, you get unlock you unlock the rest. Of course, with you always start with one, and this time for corn, it's Eternal War, which summons a small hostile army that will attack the target army immediately. So let's click that. Let's click. Um, this and perform. Spawns in an army and basically giving you free experience, really leaning into the uh, whole corn wanting war. So we'll just click that, and there we go, we get free experience. 
Alrighty, that is it for the video today. Now, is this a lord for you? Do let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe. Other than that, you will catch me live uh, pretty much every day with uh, Warmer 3 over on my Twitch channel, which I'll link below. I might even be streaming at the time I release this video. So definitely go check it out. Uh, other than that, I shall see you hopefully next time. Bye-bye.